Hello, Noblesville. All right, so today is gonna be uh, our first uh, technique talk. And um, our goal here today is to give you some really basic understanding and, and maybe some of the finer details that go into uh, the posture line and balance of each one of these strokes. So I'm going to try to share my screen right now. We'll see how this works. Hit share and then uh, present this PowerPoint. All right, so um, again, the basics here are just focusing on posture line and balance, right? Um, these are the fundamentals to every single stroke. Everything you do in this sport, posture line and balance plays an important role. So giving you some understanding and some of the details behind this is a really important step in you knowing uh, the best way to set up each one of these strokes. Now, the main goal, this is for everything we do in our sport. Everything we do is to reduce the amount of drag that your body creates during all phases of the stroke, okay? Um, we are in a unique situation as swimmers in that we move through a substance that is way more dense and creates a lot more drag than swimmers that are not in water. So obviously you can run a hundred meters a lot faster than you can swim a hundred meters. And, and the main point and, and one of the, the biggest points behind that is just the, the, what you are moving through. All right. So obviously the water creates a lot of drag. So as swimmers, we have to figure out ways to reduce that amount of drag the body creates during everything we do. So uh, the best swimmers in the world are the best in the world at reducing drag. And, and that is the main point that you have to understand about what we do in swimming. So the components to all of this are posture, line, and balance. So what do those three things mean? So your posture is your body's positioning without the orientation of the surface of the water. So if everyone stands up really tall right now, wherever you're at, and make sure you stick your chest out a little bit, pull your belly button in, you stand nice and straight, as straight as you can be, that's your posture. Posture has nothing to do with where you're at in the water. Your posture can be on land, it can be in the water, it can be standing on the bottom of the pool. Your posture is just how you've oriented your skeletal system. Okay, but when you add the water to that equation, now you're starting to talk about the line you create in the water. So your line is the posture you create in relation to the surface of the water or the bottom of the pool. Okay, so um, that the surface of the water is where we wanna spend uh, a, a great deal of our time swimming. So um, how you position yourself in relation to the surface of the water is your line. And that's when you're gonna start seeing the drag thing become uh, very important. Uh, in, in terms of what you're doing. And then balance is our last piece that we're gonna talk about today. And that is how your line is affected by gravity and how you manipulate your line to change that balance point. And that's where we're gonna talk, uh, spend a lot of time today because it's one of the neat things about our sport is that we do have this uh, um, relationship with gravity that's very different from how uh, other sports have a relationship to gravity. So um, if you play baseball or softball, uh, if you're swinging a bat, you're planted to the ground. Your balance point is your hips and you're planted to the ground. In swimming, we don't have, unless we're pushing off the wall or the blocks, we don't have a solid base point that we can manipulate um, our balance and how gravity is, is pressing on our body. So we have to do that in very different ways than other strokes. So uh, hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand uh, at least the relationship between your body and gravity in the water. So talk about posture first okay I'm not going to spend a great deal of time because my guess is most of you probably know what good posture is and if you don't go ask your parents say hey mom dad am I standing in good posture uh, every, everyone has a general idea of what good posture is but I want to talk about where we develop a lot of our posture at Noblesville all right and the first things first is athletic development and, and dry land pays plays a huge role in your posture so everything, especially if you look at our senior team dry land that all of you will eventually be moving into, everything has a posture element to it. And we pay a whole lot of attention to how you're standing when you're holding a certain weight, how you're moving, you know, everything you do is, is focused on that posture, okay? Your posture is gonna be created with a lot of upper back strength. So contrary to, to what, um, you, what we call things in swimming, everything we do and from a muscular standpoint is a push movement. So the freestyle pull, as you do this, you're, you're focusing on these muscles to do that movement, okay? 
So what we have to strengthen is our upper backs, which is why we've all seen pictures. We all have seen kids that have a real rounded back and their shoulders are almost like rolled forward. That is a lack of upper back strength. So we have to spend a lot of time putting a lot of focus on our upper back strength. So uh, in our dry lands, a lot of the movements we've been having you do, scapular push-ups. That is one of those movements that you see a lot of that upper back strength, working those little tiny muscles in your upper back. The other things we do is like prone TYA, like those reverse flies. Those things are working on those uh, upper back muscles. We do a lot of pull-ups. Uh, in the senior team, you'll see a lot of pull-ups. We do a lot of rows, we do a lot of high pulls. There are things that we do as swimmers grow and develop that focus on strengthening the upper back so that we can counteract everything we do as swimmers that likes to pull our shoulders forward. Okay, so that upper back strength plays a huge role in your posture in the water. If you have a strong upper back that can pull your shoulder blades back in together, you can hold a really nice line. But if you have that rounded back, sometimes it's difficult for you just to hold a good posture and then apply that to your line. Some other questions I love to ask swimmers about posture. How are you sitting in your chair? Right now I'm sitting in a chair and I'm focusing on uh, keeping my back straight and upright. But as you sit all day, and this is where it starts to get scary for swimmers, right? Is how do you sit in your chair all day? I know that you might look like the weird kid if you stand and sit in a perfect posture in your chair all day in class, because everyone else is probably slouched and sliding down their chair and focus on all those things. But if you sit like that all day, your body's going to be in that posture, whether you like it to be or not. How are you standing? right? When you're standing talking to your friends, are you hunched over or are you trying to stand with that good posture? If you just focus on how you sit in chairs and how you stand, your posture over time will, will get better. And then the last one, and this one is, uh, is, is uh, very interesting, is are you in phone posture? So what do I mean by phone posture? If I grab my phone right here and I hold it, you see this a ton. Everyone's just right here in their phones all day, all day, every day. We love to be in our phone. These addicting little things, right? How are you in that posture? Well, guess what? We've even seen, and I've talked to a lot of, um, a lot of trainers, and, a lot, and I've read a lot about how since these phones have been things that we are more and more addicted to, we're seeing this kind of posture where the head is down, the shoulders are forward, and you're like this because you're typing all the time. So these are all things that you have to be aware of if you want to worry about your posture. Uh, overall. And posture is not just something that is going to help you with your swimming. Posture has been related towards tons of uh, well-being issues in your life. So, you know, your, your, um, your hip health and your shoulder health and your spine and your lower back and your ankles, all of these things, uh, if, you sw if you're standing in a good posture and you focus on posture throughout your life, um, becomes something that will make you healthier. But in terms of swimming, posture applied to the, the surface of the water is your line. So let's talk about line and your head position. First things first, your line is established by your head position, okay? Where your head goes, your body is going to follow. So you need to think a lot about where your head is at and put a lot of focus on this, okay? So right here, uh, so this makes sense to move forward. Hopefully you can see my cursor up at the front. So on the right side of the screen, you've got that first circle. That is the swimmer's head. Okay, you've got the next big oval there, that is the swimmer's torso. Okay, you've got the next smaller circle to the left, which is the swimmer's hips, and then you have that next long, skinnier oval, which is the swimmer's legs. Okay, so that is right now, and then that big blue line is the surface of the water. So you're, this is a really good line with a really good posture. Okay, so the, the head is in line with the shoulders, the shoulders are in line with the hips, the hips are in line with the legs. So you're talking about a really strong, really stable posture here. And then this arrow down here, arrows are gonna mean a lot of different things as we go through this, but that arrow is focusing on, the, obviously that's the direction the swimmer is traveling in, okay? So if we look at this next slide, this is probably the number one, uh, the number one issue that we see with swimmers all over the world especially younger swimmers, okay? And that is your line and your head position. So when swimmers lift their head, okay, which is what we're showing here with this arrow, as a swimmer lifts their head, the reaction is your shoulders are gonna line up, your hips are gonna drop down in the water, and then your legs are gonna drop down in the water. This is a huge, huge, huge issue because this causes a ton of drag. So think about it, if you're trying to move forward right now, 
all the water that you are going to be trying to slip through is going to get hit with your torso, hit with your hip, hips, hit with your legs. All of these things are going to drag through the water. And it is all because you've lifted your head up. All right. And there's a lot of reasons why kids lift their head up. But just understanding what happens as you lift your head is something else has to has to happen. Right. And, and in, in the water in your line, it's going to be that your hips are going to drop lower. That's a bad position. So what happens? Coach says, get your head down. Your head's too high. So we see this a lot of times. This is an overcorrection. Okay. And this is also a, a line that is not very advantageous for fast swimming. This swimmer has just been told to put their head down. So they bury their head as deep down into the water as they can. But again, everything you do in the water has a reaction somewhere else down the chain. So as this swimmer is pushing their head deep down in the water, their torso is now popping up too high. Their hips are way too high out of the water and their legs are out of the water. This is causing drag also. Is it as much drag as this swimmer before? No. But we're still causing a lot of drag. So as the swimmer is trying to move down the pool, you're going to see a lot of water get plowed. You're almost like a snow plow with your head. It's pushing too much water. That's slowing you down. That water can't roll over your back easily. So you're going to build up water uh, up here on top of your back. And then uh, in overall, it's just going to be a lot of work to get forward through the water. So again, this is the line you want to create, okay? Right on the surface of the water. Baseline for all strokes. This is the position. Okay, so uh, it's very important for you to understand that your head position plays a huge, huge, huge role in creating these postures, all right? Where your head goes, your hips will often travel in the opposite direction. So if you're a swimmer that really feels like they, their legs sink, start by focusing on your head position, okay? Now, it's, line isn't everything. Okay, line is not everything. Line is important, but line isn't everything. There are three words here, posture, line, and balance. So you've understood what a good posture is. You now understand what a good line is. Let's talk about balance. Balance is all about understanding gravity and where gravity is pressing on you. So uh, I've added some circles here. We know these big circles. There's your head, torso, hips, legs, but I've added some smaller circles, which are your arms. Okay, because your arms are going to now start to play a huge role in how gravity is pressing on your body. Okay. When you're standing on land, let's say you're getting ready to, to shoot that basketball or swing that baseball bat or swing the golf club. Gravity is pushing mostly on your hips. Your center of gravity is your hips. So when you're floating in the water and you've created that really great line and your arms are hanging at your side and your hands are down by your hips, Okay, where gravity wants to press on your body, where the center of gravity wants to be on your body is your hips. But like we just talked about earlier, the line you want to create in the water is up at the surface and your hips want to be in line with your head. And because you don't have the ground to press off of, as gravity presses down at that center point of your hips, your legs are going to drop your, and your head is going to want to pop up. So here's gravity pushing your hips down and your upper body is going to want to pop up. Okay, so how do we manipulate our center of gravity? All right, on land, there's a lot of things athletes do to manipulate their center of gravity. They maybe widen their stance or they get lower to the ground. It changes their center of gravity. As swimmers, you can't do those things. You don't have the ground to press off of. You only have the water to press off of, which is a substance that allows a lot of movement. So you have to think, how do you shift your center of gravity? So the next picture here is, is getting your arms extended overhead. So that swimmer has now moved their arms. See their hands up front here. The line is still create. This is a streamlined position or a position 11 kicking position. That's why uh, we do a lot of position 11 kick. But the reason for that is when you move your arms up over your head this way, your center of gravity in the water shifts from your hips to right about your sternum. Okay, and the good news is as gravity is pressing on your sternum, your hips are now going to be popping up higher out of the water. And the other good news is there, uh, something that helps you tremendously with this is the reason your upper body is never going to sink too low down in the water with your arms over your head is because you have lungs. And lungs are, at the end of the day, just these kind of um, fancy organic uh, uh, balloons filled with air. Okay, and that creates a lot of buoyancy. So, 
As your, as your lungs are filled with air, it's gonna help you float. Gravity is gonna press on your lungs. Your hips are gonna pop up. Your arms are gonna keep you balanced forward. And gravity is gonna press on you in a way that is very advantageous for swimming very fast. Okay, so now we've created a line in the water that is allowing us to stay flat at the surface, not have our hips drop, and it keeps us very balanced. Okay, so knowing how gravity presses on your body is really, really, really important. We're gonna talk a little bit about that later, but uh, just from a very general standpoint, knowing how to shift the center of gravity as a swimmer from your hips to your sternum is really, really important. And all it, does, all it is is to move your hands up over your head. Position 11, streamline, those are, those are positions that are going to create great balance in the water. So if, if a swimmer here is swimming, uh, and, and we'll talk more about this image when we talk about uh, each individual stroke, but when we talk about basic posture in the water, we now have this swimmer swimming freestyle. And our focus should always be keep the hands forward so that we can move our center of gravity. So uh, we have four quadrants here. These two are the front quadrants. These two are the back quadrants. This front lower quadrant is obviously the best. This is where you're going to be pull pulling, pressing on the water. And then uh, this other quadrant here is good because gravity is going to press in that arm. It's going to keep your line in balance. But... Uh, ultimately, there's not a whole lot going here, and if you spend too much time there, it can slow you down. But, but regardless, both of these back here are red because the more time your arms spend back in these two quadrants here, the more the center of gravity is going to shift to your hips, the more your legs are going to drop, and the more work you're going to have to do just to move forward. And again, what's the point that we have in swimming? Reduce drag. Okay, so uh, to reduce the most amount of drag, you want those arms spending more time in the front than in the back. Now, there is no possible way to avoid the back quadrant, right? When you pull, you are always gonna have to pull your hands through there, but it's limiting the amount of time. And if you have one hand back here at the hips, can you counteract that by having another hand up here in the front quadrant, right? So these are the things that you've gotta understand about basic posture in the water, okay? The next point is a quick one and it's just getting narrow, okay? So now you're looking at a swimmer from directly straight on. So this person is coming straight at you. And uh, when we talk about reducing drag, and this, this isn't so much talking about posture line and balance, right? We're gonna assume that this swimmer here is, is swimming in a really great posture line and balance. But when we talk about getting narrow, you gotta talk about rotation. And, and the goal should always be to reduce drag to make yourself as narrow as possible. So that's where rotation and strokes that rotate, we'll talk more about that later, but uh, rotation is really, really important. Okay, so the swimmer here on the left, right, as their head down in line, everything's good. They have one shoulder pretty deep down in the water, but that other one is out of the water a pretty significant amount. So the water cannot press on this part of that swimmer's body. It allows them to reduce the drag. This swimmer, who might not be rolling enough, okay, has a whole lot of water pressing on both shoulders and their head. So as a swimmer, understanding how to get narrow and, and kind of slip through the water is all about rotation. And, and that position on the left is going to reduce drag and allow you to cut through the water. The example I always use is, uh, do you want to be a pontoon boat that is very wide and, and uh, or like a wide fishing boat. You know, that thing isn't gonna get moving very fast, okay? But an Olympic rowboat is super narrow. It's almost, it's just a little bit wider than the hips of the people that are sitting in it. And it's so that boat has less, uh, less contact with the water and, and can slip through the water so much better. So do you wanna be this nice speed boat over here or do you wanna be this fishing boat that isn't designed to move fast? So, uh, Getting narrow is a huge, huge, huge part of you moving quickly through the water. Okay, so uh, last point here is one size does not fit all. And this is going to be where, um, this is going to be where, you know, coaches will always say, well, here's, you know, the basics to this, but there is always little deviations. So sometimes this can get confusing, but at the end of the day, um, 
having that foundation that we started with is, is really important. So everyone's body floats differently. That is just a fact. Uh, when I was swimming, my legs loved to sink, no matter what I did. So, you know, we've done floating before. Uh, you've seen people float. You guys probably know that person that could jump in the pool on a Saturday afternoon, lay on their back and float there for four and a half hours, not even have to move. And, you know, if I was that person, I'd lay on my back and my legs would be sinking and I'd be struggling just to keep my head above the water. I don't float well. Okay, some people float very well. So your body's ability to float is really important to understand because your body's ability to float is going to change your balance in the water and how much, uh, how much you have to balance in the water, right? So uh, knowing that is really important, which is why at the end of the day, for me, I was a swimmer that always had to have my hands out in front of my body just to keep my legs up. Some people can get away with maybe not having their hands out in front of their body quite as much, because they float better, okay? The second, specifics to each stroke. So when we talked about rotation, obviously in butterfly and breaststroke, there isn't rotation. Freestyle and backstroke, you, ro you rotate this way, right? Butterfly and breaststroke, you rotate this way. So understanding that is it does change certain aspects of our posture line and balance, okay? With that also, uh, when we go through these individual strokes, I'll show you that the backstroke, position in the water is actually a little different from the freestyle position. And where in freestyle, I was talking about being really flat right at the surface of the water. For certain backstrokers, sometimes being a little rounded is important, right? So there are specifics to each stroke that change how we deviate from that baseline posture line and balance. But again, you can't really understand those deviations until you have a strong foundation of understanding the basics, okay? Uh, the mechanics of your swimming are going to change uh, your posture line and balance slightly. One of the examples I use is there are a lot of Olympic level sprinters that purposely lift their head up a little bit higher. There's a reason for that. Does it mean it's perfect for everyone? No. Does it mean everyone at Noblesville should go start swimming with their head up just a little bit higher? No. There's a reason why they do that. And I will talk about those when we talk about deviations in each one of our stroke demonstrations. But understand that at times, if you're watching a swimmer, uh, like, you know, I've told you this week to watch some of your, uh, to watch some of your weakest stroke events, and you just watch this, and you, and you, okay, okay, so I learned posture line and balance, but now I'm watching this person swim, and, and they don't have the posture that, that my coach talks about, that might be on purpose. Remember, when you're watching the best swimmers in the world, they are far, 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 far down the, uh, the process of, uh, their technique and their development. And they, they started with the fundamentals too. So it's important for you to understand the fundamentals and the give and take of races. So that's a little bit in the same breath. You know, there are aspects of a certain race that might change why a swimmer holds a certain line or balance in the pool a certain way. So a great example is, uh, the easiest example to understand is the 1500 freestyle in the uh, 50 freestyle are two very, very, very different events. And where the 1500 meter freestyle swimmer may need to rotate more and slice through the water a little bit more because their race is going to be 15 to 18 minutes long, you know, you're focusing on reducing as much drag as possible because it's a long race and you've got to conserve some energy. Whereas a 50 swimmer might not rotate as much because they are just going all out raw power and their race is only going to last 20 seconds. So understanding the give and take of races. Now, if the uh, 1500 swimmer doesn't rotate enough and wants to swim like the 50 freestyler, there's that give and take, okay? You give up a little bit of the technical um, ability to slip through the water uh, and you're gonna take a little bit more power, but that might cause you to, to hit a wall sooner. So we'll talk about all these things as we go through some of our uh, demonstrations and some of our videos for each specific stroke. But at the end of the day, these things are the foundation of fast swimming, okay? The foundation of fast swimming. It's, it's uh, really interesting because I've sat in some room with some of our Olympic coaches and we watch video of some of the best swimmers in the world. And, you know, you watch uh, someone push off the wall, a world caliber swimmer. And the funniest thing is all of the best coaches in the world are sitting there going, look at that line. Look at their posture in the water. Right? They're not looking at the pull, the kick, the breathing. They, the first thing everyone notices is the posture. And my last note with that in mind is uh, we all remember when Glenn Mills came in, um, in December 
and uh, spent a few days with our team. I think it's really important. One of the things he, one of the first things he told me when I first met him on the pool deck uh, many, many years ago was uh, the first thing he looks at is how a swimmer pushes off the wall. And swimmers that push off the wall with a great body line, great posture, great balance, they hold that line, they glide, they're underwater. He knows that swimmer is going to focus more the entire length down the pool than the swimmer that, that pushes off with a sloppy line, sloppy balance, and uh, just starts getting right into it. So uh, hopefully you guys get, um, get some good understanding of posture line and balance here. If you have any questions, reach out to your coaches. All right, send them a quick email. Say, can you explain this to me? Or, or um, you know, what are ways that I can work on this in practice? Or, or is this something that I need to work on? Talk to your coaches, hear from them. Uh, they are a resource for you, especially during this time when we can't be in the water. Um, you being, you asking those questions, your coaches is going to be a huge, huge, huge benefit. Uh, so uh, the next video I'm going to do technique wise is going to be on freestyle. It'll, there'll always be a recap of the posture line of balance, but we'll start talking about some of the, some of the basics with that. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it's going to help you. Uh, you younger swimmers take some notes. If you, you know, like I've talked about with a lot of the goal setting stuff, and a lot of those things, having, uh, having a notebook to write down a lot of these things is really important. Um, but hopefully you guys take a lot from this and then think about it so that when you get back into the pool. It's something that you can start working on right away and get a huge amount of benefit from. So uh, until then, I will talk to you guys later.